Well, his circumstances are, briefly, he is immortal, he cannot die. What thrill that held for him left centuries ago. So now he's basically clinically depressed, incredibly bored, and gets through his day by sleeping and watching television. And he does sustain himself on human blood, but he's not a vampire. It's not like turning to dust in the sun or repelled by silver bullets. He has tried to make everything really convenient. He has no shortage of money from his days as a day trader, so he's got drawers of money. So he buys plasma from interns. He corrupts at the local hospital. He goes, hey, go get me some plasma. I'll overpay you. And he just peels off hundreds like they're nothing. And these interns are like, great. So he keeps like the salad crisper in the refrigerator is full of bags of blood. So he doses up on blood and eats a vegetarian meal at the del at the diner every day just to do something. And he also goes to bingo. And so that's been his life for who knows how long. And he watches awful TV because he's that bored. Like, you know, religious, he, just, he watches the crazy televangelist shows. Just, he's killing, killing time because he has nothing but. And so at some point he finds out he has a daughter so all of a sudden this unhuman guy must have been human enough to create life. And then he meets up with the daughter and analog things ensue in that people are after him, they're using the daughter's leverage. There's a woman at the diner who starts to have a bit of interest in him, a mild curiosity because he comes in every day, he's nice enough and he's interesting. And so all of a sudden, humanity comes rushing in. A daughter who has daughter-dad issues. A woman who has quasi-romantic issues, some curiosity, like, you know, what do you do, Jack? And then there's other things that factor in, and now Jack has to deal with people, which he kind of loathes. He doesn't hate people, he just is not good with them. He's good at killing them, <laughs> he's good at eating them, but he's not good at eating dinner with them, walking with them, all these things he has to do. So you see his slight agony at all of this. And as the film goes on, uh, the violence and whatever gets more ratcheted up and we see, get to see Jack in action, how he takes people out, which is a wonderful sight to see. My favorite, for a few, a few reasons, and you might get a laugh out of this, which is hopeful. There's a scene where I rip a man's throat out, which was built by our amazing special effects guy, Randy, over a series of days. He said, Henry, it's gonna sound like a cartilage crushing, it's gonna look like a, a, a larynx. I mean, the guy really is a pro. He said, but we only have one. So if you get through part of the shot and it's not feeling right, stop, we'll reset. Because I gotta, you know, I'm off the side of the stage with a blood pump. Everything has to be right. It's freezing cold out. So you're gonna, you know, like grab it, find the, the little tearaway spot, and pull forcefully. If you can't get it, stop. We do the scene. I've got the throat. It's not coming. I'm like, oh no. I either go for it and semi break it, or I mangle it and don't get the shot. And I went, I just tripled down and went. <laughs> <laughs> and the blood came at the right time, but it, I, we got the shot. It looks magnificent. But was, we didn't have the budget to do that thing again. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, don't screw this up. It's not, and I had this like quasi panic, like, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh, 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 good. Like, yay, his throat came off. And the other actor, of course, like, so, yeah, I sold it very well. But it's one of those moments where, like, man, we are in a small budget film. <laughs> we got one of these. And we had like five of those. If you don't do it right, we're screwed because we can't afford another. And there's a few moments in the film, anytime you see something like big and dramatic happen, like, whoa, that was badass. We had one of those. <laughs> if you see the film, you're like, I bet that was that one, that one, that one, and that one. You'd probably be right on all counts. I'm in the car with, with uh, Kate, Kara, the waitress. I'm extracting the bullet from my head. She goes, what are you doing? I just like, well, if I don't extract the bullets, I, I get migraines. For me, it's just like, it's like what I gotta do. It's an inconvenience. And for her, it's like horrific. And she's reacting wonderfully. Like, I can't, I, who are you? She's like having a really bad day. And I'm like, ah, people are such a drag. And then there's that moment where I've got Stephen Ogg, Alex, his face, I'm squashing his face into the bar. I said, I'm gonna eat you. 
I'm literally going to tear you apart and eat you. And I have, I'm not trying to be mean. I don't, I don't dislike the guy even though he's trying to kill me. I'm just telling him a real true fact. And then there's the very dramatic scene where I kind of yell at death, that big monologue, which I rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed. I was, I work out whenever I could. I'm on the treadmill at the hotel. I have the script where the, the numbers that the, the TV read out, I have the script. I'm rehearsing, I'm, I'm just talking, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to myself, I'm doing that. At one point I'm doing that scene, I'm like, just talking that. And a, I feel a hand on my shoulder. I fall off the treadmill. Some wonderful person in the gym saw me and thought I was having some kind of <laughs> meltdown. And I fell off and I picked myself up. I'm like, yeah! So I was completely startled. She goes, oh, I'm so sorry, I, are you okay? I said, I was. I said, I'm working on a, I'm a, in a film. She's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I just thought you were having a bad time. I'm like, thank you so much for caring. And I had to go back to, you know, in a sweatsuit doing lines. And so that was uh, one of those moments. <laughs>